the GPU price war is heating up, or rather cooling down, as each manufacturer has now released a lower cost, lower performance, and lower power consumption variant to their next generation hardware line. Today, AMD returns NVIDIA Salvo with the RX 7600, a more entry-level card targeting 1080p gaming. Has AMD discovered the golden ratio for price, performance, and VRAM? And do any of the partner models stand out from the rest? Let's find out. But first, this video is brought to you by our test system. It features a Core i9-13900K, 32GB of DDR5-6000 memory, the latest press drivers provided by AMD, and everything running under Windows 11. So a big thanks to our test system. Moving over into 1080p, and this is what AMD is targeting with this card as the ideal resolution, and probably where most gamers who get this card will be playing, but we'll also take a look at 1440p and 4K here in a second. All these percentages are relative to the reference model RX 7600, which is shown in green. And from that, we can see that the Power Color, Sapphire, ASRock, and ASUS models are all just a little bit faster than the reference model, which is a difference from the 4060 Ti we just took a look at. All cards are a little bit faster than the last generation RX 6650 XT, which is probably what most AMD gamers would be cross shopping this with. All of them are roughly in line with the RTX 2080 from several generations ago, and all are a little bit slower than the RTX 3060 Ti. This does mean the recently released 4060 Ti is about 25% faster than all these cards, but it is substantially more expensive. Enabling ray tracing doesn't do the RX 7600 any favors, and it actually loses performance in comparison to its competition. The RX 6650 XT is now just 2% slower than the reference RX 7600, and the 3060 Ti goes from being 11% faster to 46% faster. It does lose comparatively less against its AMD counterparts, but overall not a very strong showing from the RX 7600. Moving up into 1440p doesn't really change the charts as much as ray tracing does, with the RX 7600 still being faster than the RX 6650 XT, and still being a bit slower than the RTX 3060 Ti, though now by 18%. The ASRock RX 7600 Phantom Gaming and the ASUS RX 7600 Strix are both about 3% faster than the reference models, while the Sapphire and PowerColor models are about 2% faster. This does mean at 1440p all these cards are in line with the Intel Arc A770, which does have the benefit of having 16GB of VRAM, while the RTX 4060 Ti is decidedly in a higher performance class, being 30% faster. That doesn't mean that you can't game at 1440p though, since in all of our testing we were around 75 FPS on average, and you could get much better performance by lowering settings or enabling FSR. Jump up into the 4K results though, and we can see the results of only having 8GB of VRAM. All cards are basically now tied with the RTX 3060, the non-TI variant, which comes with 12GB of VRAM. It is now substantially slower than the Intel Arc A770. It does keep its lead over the RX 6650 XT, which also has 8GB of VRAM, but it also is now basically tied with the two generations old now RX 5700 XT, which is now a few years old and not that impressive. The one saving grace is that the minimum frame times at 4K don't really fall off a cliff and are actually pretty comparable with what you would get in the ARC A770 and the RTX 3060, but compared to the RX 6650 XT, we're only talking about two frames. Power consumption on the RX 7600 is actually pretty good, especially when compared to the last generation cards. The RX 6600 XT, which this card is directly replacing, is a bit slower and uses a bit more power, while the RTX 3060 is also a pretty comparable card in terms of performance and uses even more energy. When compared to newer generation cards though, the RX 7600 doesn't look that great. The RTX 4060 Ti is between 25 and 40% faster, and it uses actually less energy than the reference AMD RX 7600. Changing this chart to watts per frame makes it easier to see the generational leaps that we're talking about here, with the RX 7600 being better than pretty much all the older generation cards, 
but all the new generation cards, namely the RX 7900 XT and especially the RTX 4060 Ti, use substantially less energy per frame. And this holds true even at a V-synced 60 Hz. The RX 7600 does very well compared to older generations of cards, while still using a bit more energy than pretty much all of the RTX 4000 series, with the exception of the 4090. It is worth noting that the RX 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX use a lot more energy than these cards, and especially the NVIDIA cards at a locked 60 FPS, which does seem to indicate that there might be something in the architecture which doesn't let the AMD cards scale down to a lower power usage. Fan noise is one area though that the AMD cards seem to do pretty well, with the ASUS RX 7600 Strix OC doing the best at 24.2 decibels, followed by the ASRock RX 7600 Phantom Gaming at 26.8, and the PowerColor RX 7600 Hellhound in the Quiet BIOS at 30 dBA, which oddly enough is only 0.2 dBA quieter than the non-Quiet BIOS. The Sapphire RX 7600 Pulse does score the worst at 33.5 dBA, which is only about 1 dBA higher than the reference model, and in reality is still not that loud, but it is louder than much faster cards such as the RTX 3090. But as we've said before, GPU fan noise is often more due to the fan curve than it is to the cooler performance. And taking out fan curves and normalizing at 35 decibels and 160 watts of power usage, and we can see that the worst cooler is actually the reference AMD RX 7600, topping out at 75.7 degrees. The ASUS RX 7600 Strix OC leads the pack at 47.9 degrees, which is rather impressive since I've been outside in hotter weather than that. And the ASRock RX 7600 Phantom Gaming comes in in a close second at 51.7. And PowerColor and Sapphire come in mostly tied at 74 and 74.6 degrees. It is worth noting that all these cards overclock to basically the same level of performance, all hitting about 2.9 gigahertz and all of them maxing out the AMD limited memory speed. So the cooler and the dimensions as well as any additional features like dual BIOS is what you're paying for over the stock variations. That does mean though at $350, the ASUS RX 7600 Strix OC is at the bottom of the performance per dollar chart being roughly in line with the RX 6800 XT as well as the RTX 4060 Ti, which is not too bad a spot to be in considering it does have the best cooler, but you will get more performance per your dollar on other cards. The ASRock RX 7600 Phantom Gaming and the PowerColor RX 7600 Hellhound are at $310 and $290 respectively, meaning that they come in at right around the same performance per dollar as the RTX 3060 Ti. The Sapphire RX 7600 Pulse is actually the best value RX 7600 card that we've tested, matching the reference model on price at $270 while also including a better cooler. In terms of value though, it's not really that special since it does basically match the RX 6650 XT and the RX 6600 XT. That does mean that AMD is doing a little bit better job than NVIDIA at pricing since they are at least competitive with their own internal cards from last generation. But since performance is basically the same between the RX 6650 XT and the RX 7600, it does beg the question why this card needed to be made since the performance is the same and the price is basically the same and the feature set is pretty much the same. That being said, prices have come down on the RX 6650 XT since launch, so hopefully we see the same with the RX 7600. Until then, it does seem rather pointless. Has AMD found the golden ratio for price, performance, and VRAM? And do any of the and do any of the partner models perform better than the other ones? I don't know. Find out at the story at eleven.